Hi, it's uh, Mike Stevenson here. Today in this video, we're going to take a look at um, a comparison between Logic Apps and Data Factory. So we've got um, two tools that are aimed at moving data around as part of integration scenarios. So if we start with Logic Apps, we've got a target audience of developers who need to integrate systems. So in the previous video, we talked about the differences between Power Automate and Logic Apps, where they're similar in that their workflows based around transactional messaging. But one Logic Apps were aimed at developers. Um, the target audience for Power Automate was about um, Dynamics developers, non-integration professionals, business super users, and that kind of thing. So here we're talking about specifically developers who are um, integrating systems, things like SAP, Dataverse. They're doing um, enterprise integration patterns would be common for to be seen implemented with Logic Apps. Data Factory, uh, the target audience is more likely to be developers who need to move around large data sets. So instead of moving around a transactional message, we're talking about an entire data set where you might have all of the records for a full table or something like that. Um, typically, Data Factory is more equivalent to um, something like SSIS. So a developer who previously had been developing SSIS solutions would be likely to be using um, Data Factory if they're in the cloud. So those key use cases for Logic Apps, we've got process automation and we've got system to system workflow. Those are the two main types of um, integration we would see with Logic Apps. With Data Factory, it's going to be more around the ETL, ELT type scenarios. So we excuse me, um, we might extract a full table from a database and move it and create a file of, of all that data to be sent to a system, or we might upload data into a database, something like that. Now, the key differences here, predominantly, it's around the, the size of data that you're moving. So a Logic App can work with batches, but typically they would be sort of small to medium sized batches, and more likely they would be individual messages. So let's say, I think that off the top of my head, the loop limit for a Logic App is probably around 100,000. Um, so when you're implementing a Logic App, you've got some limits on the size of data you can process. Um, you might have large messages, I think, somewhere in the region of like 100 meg, maybe, um, depending on which plans you're on and stuff like that's feasible. With Data Factory, you're really talking about significantly larger data sets of gigabytes of data. Um, much more than the use case data factory would typically work with. Now, that doesn't mean you might not have scenarios where you're moving around master data, data sets of reference data, so like types of customer or um, you know a list of business partners or something like that. that. That would be common as well, but typically data factories designed to scale to support significant size data sets. Now, you can do orchestration with both tools. So, Logic Apps really you're orchestrating the workflow for processing transactional messages. You're going to be orchestrating across APIs, across connections to systems. The orchestration for data factory is much more around these um, these data movements. So you might do pull data out of a database, execute a transformation over that data source, um, load it into a target system. Um, with Logic Apps, you're more likely to do a more complex orchestration where you've got compensation patterns, you've got um, you know patterns where you would update multiple systems. Now there are some overlaps. So in both uh, both technologies, you can do transformation of data. So typically in Logic Apps, you'd do something like an XSLT. You would be doing something like um, Liquid Maps. You might. Commonly, you might call a function, for example, or do inline code. Um, Data Factory, you've got a few mapping technologies where it's really an internal thing, a bit like what it used to be like in SSIS, where you would define field mappings between the source and target, and um, and you would sort of execute um, expressions on that data as it transforms. So really, with Logic Apps, the idea is you're more likely to have an input message and it transforms to an output message, whereas the the data factory is going to be doing the transform as it streams the data. And I guess that that's one of the significant differences between Logic Apps and Data Factory as well, is that that idea of streaming versus buffering. So 
logic apps, if you came from a biz talk background, you'd, you'd be very familiar with the concept of streaming of data for, um, for processing messages in pipelines. Once you got them into an orchestration, you really had that message buffered in memory. Um, data factory, it's much more of a streaming approach, so it'll it'll buffer um, s sort of pages of data, work through, transform it, load it, go to the next page, and, that, and that's how it can do that much bigger scale of data. Whereas um, logic apps um, are much more around that buffered message in memory in the workflow. Now, we do have some differences in pricing as well. So logic apps, um, the, to be honest, compared to data factory, the pricing is quite simple. So logic apps would be consumption. So if we're down here at the bottom, we've got consumption where it's per execute, per action. So if I've got one logic app with 100 actions in it, and it runs once, then I'll pay a small amount of money for, for each of those actions so I can get that per execute type pricing. Well, logic app standard, you've also got the option of um, per hour pricing, so you would be running on a plan. That plan would um, have a compute cost based on the size of the node. You would pay per hour, and then that would be a different execution, a uh, different cost model. And it you know, kind of can give you better scale and options for dynamic scale and up and down, whereas consumption is much more similar to just rent a temporary amount of um, execution on a SaaS platform and then you, you run your workflow. Now, Data Factory is significantly different. There's a number of different components you need to think about. So first off, the pricing is different depending on when you run a job, which runtime does it run on? So you've got the managed runtime, You've got the um, self-hosted runtime. And there's kind of a couple of flavors of that managed one, whether it's on a network or, or just pure on Azure. Um, so the prices differ slightly there. And then within that price, you've got things for actions, for executions and that kind of thing. Um, so you're kind of paying per hour based on the amount of data you're moving. Now, one of the key things to remember here, um, I've had a couple of times customers have implemented Data Factory and... When you think about it initially, it sounds like it wouldn't be too expensive, but then it ended up costing a little bit more than they planned because you've got the concurrency of running a data set and then how frequently you run the job. So again, if you're running it constantly and you're running with high um, high concurrency, you can end up having um, the, the cost being a bit more than you planned for. So I think, but you know, date, like as with all Azure things, it's, you've got to test the cost as well as try to predict the cost. Um, the There's also cost for Data Factory in terms of um, orchestration runs. If you're sort of having an orchestration job that goes across, um, you know, controlling your pipelines and stuff. Now, I think here the, the key thing for pricing is both of them can be cheap. Both of them can be quite expensive depending on what you're doing. So I think there's, there's definitely a kind of understand your requirements, pick the right tool for the right job, understand the cost and try to model it. But then when you implement and test the cost early to make sure you validate your assumptions. Now, we'll have a look at a couple of reference architectures. So here's a, a really great use case for data factories. So over here on the side, we've got a bunch of partners who are out in the field, they're branch officers. They produce data sets every day and they would S SFTP them to head office. So if you imagine we've got head offices kind of this side of the line here. Um, they ex we expose an SFTP server. Um, it could be a storage account. You've got the SFTP capability on storage, but we, let's say we've got the SFTP server that they dump files to of everything they've done that day. We can then have a centralized data factory job here. So we could run a pipeline that reads these files here from the SFTP site, dumps the data into a SQL um, database, and then we can have head office can build a bunch of reports in Power BI that report on that data. And here we're using data factory really in its, um, in its element where it's processing decent sized files, loading them into a data source like a SQL database. Um, and it, it's a really good SQL use case. You can do quite high um, sizes of data for reasonable cost. Now, what you can do, um, if we had a logic app, typical reference architecture of a logic app, it might be something like this. So here we've got um, 
an integration where we've got people, users are using a power power app to write data into a dataverse um, about appointments. So we've got two, um, two interfaces here represented by the two black boxes. The first interface goes and queries from the dataverse to get a batch of data. Now, in the example here, um, when I implemented this solution, we, we had API management sitting in front of Dataverse, but actually the Logic app could just as easily um, connect with the Dataverse connector and could pull that data out. Now, one of the good things, Logic app um, has a, if you've got a schedule job that you need to run once a day, Logic app has a schedule um, trigger. Now, you can do scheduling in Data Factory as well. Um, so just bear in mind, they both have that capability. It's just in the, in the example architectures here are just subtly different. Um, in the, the last one, the data factory is probably just checking on a recurring basis every every hour, something like that. Here, we might have a logic app triggers once a night. Now, once the logic app has the data set from Dataverse, we're then likely to um, to use something like an integration account or a map to transform that data so in a scenario where we're dealing with um if you imagine we're querying json data over here over here we want a flat file so here this is where you might use an integration account to transform json to csv by doing a, a map and then an encode or something like that and then we can deliver with an sftp connector and what happens over here is that that's interface one. The partner would process the data over here and they would send a response file back. Now, this logic app here could have a polling um, trigger that would just go and check for files on a regular basis, reads the flat file, uses the integration account to convert it back to JSON. And then we can either use API management or we can use um, the Dataverse connectors and we, we basically update data back into the Dataverse. So this is like a two interfaces. We send a batch of, um, of say, appointments. We get responses for these appointments coming back and we can load them in. Now, the, this is a typical, um, and, and I guess for this example, it's like a typical EAI type application that might have been done in BizTalk before where it's background processing of, of sort of small batches of data. Um, it's a good migration use case for BizTalk to Logic Apps because you've got a lot of similar things. Now, one, one thing to maybe think about here, and likewise in the, the Data Factory scenario, if you're querying Dataverse, you'll get page sizes, so you might pull back pages of 1,000 records. So if your, if your Logic App needs to pull back 2,000 records, you might have to query for multiple pages. And, um, and there's patterns around how you do that in data factory and logic apps. Um, so just kind of bear those kind of things in mind. But here's two classic reference architectures of how you might use these two technologies in their core sort of comfort zones. Now, one thing we could do, let's imagine we're using these two technologies together. So this scenario here, we've got um, two interfaces and we've got, um, number one, we've got a Logic app over here that runs on, a, on, say, a daily schedule. And it will go and it will make a call out to an external application who has a, an API, which would trigger an extract. So this is a common scenario we've seen quite a few times. You go and trigger that API and say, can you do me an extract? And it'll basically write data on demand from that extract into an SFTP location. So maybe it's quite a big data set that you want to extract. So let's say for argument's sake, in this case, it's um, 150,000 records, half a million records, whatever. Um, so you're not necessarily going to pull that back on an API, even if it's a paged API. You might just be pulling back at like a big extract data file. Now, the, the scenario here, we could definitely pick this file up with, Biz, uh, with uh, Logic Apps. However, the likelihood is because of the size of the file and what we might want to do with the data, it's unlikely we would do that because we'd have to um, deal with challenges around the loop limits on logic apps. And, and actually, it probably would just be inefficient to um, process that in a logic app because it would take time to go through all the records and that kind of thing. So let's imagine with a logic app, we've triggered it and then we know that the the extracts finished because the the triggers um, 
you know the the action here is going to response or maybe what we do is um we trigger it and then we might have a delay shape here that kind of waits an hour before processing the file because we know it might take 30 minutes to extract the data but what the logic app could do then is you can call from a logic app to a data factory pipeline so this is a great use case where what we're saying is we're going to use the best best of both worlds logic apps graded api kind of orchestration we know the file's going to be on the ftp server we could you know what we could do is we could even with a logic app we could delay for 20 minutes to allow the file and then we could even check to see that the file was there before we trigger the pipeline so that would keep us in that that logic app ecosystem for managing exceptions and stuff we then trigger the pipeline down here and we've told the pipeline here's the file we want you to import so it'll go and grab the file and it'll basically do the you know the thing that data factory does best of streaming through this big data file loading that data into a sql database and then the pipeline we can either get a response when it's done or we can pull for completion um the pipeline would then return let's assume it was um we've got some kind of polling going on or checking when the pipeline's finished the logic app might trigger out the service bus a message that says i've completed this bulk data load and then here we can drive multiple interfaces off that data set being imported into our organization so what we could do one of the data sets uh, what sorry one of the interfaces we might trigger is let's say off service bus we've got an interface that says from the data that we've imported we need to um, query the database to find all the records that have changed and normally there might only be a thousand records on a daily basis so we might have a data set that updates every single order but we know that only a small number of them will actually change so here's a great use case where we could use a logic app to execute a query on that database to get the records we need we could then transform them you know maybe we use a, a liquid map or something like that transform the data to the format we want we can then use the sap connector maybe, maybe we loop over the records here call the sap connector and we can load those individual records via something like a babby call in sap or something like that and that that would be a really good way of combining the technologies to deal with what data factory does best of those big data sets and logic apps can do um work with service bus to do pub sub to trigger multiple different interfaces that use that data to, to achieve different outcomes um, and that would be a really good um, use of the two so hopefully this video is interesting talking about the differences and similarities between logic apps and data factory showing example architectures where you would choose one versus the other and sample architectures where you might combine the two technologies together um, thank you for listening hope you're enjoying the series about Azure Integration Services, where do I use what?